Hi everyone, this is Learning with Linda, and today I bring you the topic of stimulus in the new year 2022. Hope you guys had an amazing time celebrating the end of 2021 with your loved ones and with your family, of course. Always wishing you the very best. Anyways, in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you regarding who will be receiving the new stimulus or tax credits in the year 2022 and who could also be eligible to receive additional money this coming year. I'm going to be transparent with you guys. This information is mostly going to benefit those families with children. So if you know anyone that has a child or you're a parent yourself, feel free to stay until the end of this video to make sure that you receive this information. Now, before we get started, if you are interested in the latest news regarding stimulus, child tax credit, SNAP, PEBT, and everything in between, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Now let's get right to it. And if you're interested in learning on how to get cash back from your food stamps or any grocery shopping, make sure you check out this video, how to get cash back from your food stamps. Link will be in the video description. And don't forget about the Ibotta app where you can get cash back when doing your grocery shopping. You can also receive $10 once you've signed up, uploaded your first receipt using the referral code that is on the screen. And for those that want to maximize your rewards, you can use a second app like Fetch Rewards to upload the same receipt you just uploaded to the Ibotta app. Fetch is actually super easy to use and it will give you points for uploading any type of receipt. You'll get additional points just for signing up with the referral code that you see on the screen. Now going on into the new year of the year 2022, want to remind you parents, for those that had a child born in the year 2021, $1,400 is available for newborns. Here I bring you the additional details. Taxpayers with a child born in 2021 are looking forward to relief money of up to $1,400 on top of their tax return in 2022 thanks to the American Rescue Plan. So the plan offers payments worth up to $1,400 to eligible individuals and their dependent children. Those eligible for the stimulus money must have had either a child born in 2021 or a obtained a new dependent. If either of that information is true, then taxpayers can claim their recovery rebate credit when filing their tax return in the year 2022. So to be able to claim the full amount of the stimulus money, a taxpayer must have had an adjusted gross income under $75,000 or an income of, a, of up to $150,000 and are married and filing jointly. So the eligible dependent could also be in line to receive the child tax credit. So just as a quick reminder, guys, these $1,400 is nothing really new. Most of us have already received or those who qualified already received those $1,400 from the federal government. However, for those who had a child that were that was born in the year 2021, right now we could say last year, those children are now eligible to receive those $1,400 once they file their taxes this year in 2022. Now, on top of that stimulus money, parents can also claim an additional $3,600 for newborns that were born in the year 2021 once they file their taxes. So if you have a newborn in 2021, you will also be able to claim the child tax credit worth up to $3,600. Now, if you do not receive monthly payments between July through December, parents of newborns no longer need to use the IRS portals uh, to manage the household details and monthly payments. Instead, families with newborns will receive the full amount once you file your taxes in 2022 and claim your new dependent there. Now, moving on to the topic of unemployment benefits. If you were an individual that received unemployment benefits in the year 2020, you may be eligible for a tax refund worth up to $1,189. Here I bring you the additional details. 
The Internal Revenue Service has confirmed that remaining tax refunds for unemployment overpayments in the year 2020 will not be sent out until 2022. In that batch of corrections, the average special refund was $1,189. These refunds on unemployment overpayment stem from the American Rescue Plan, which Congress approved back in March 2021. That plan allowed up to $10,200 of 2020 unemployment benefits to be completely tax-free. Now, in order to qualify for these refunds, you must have filed your 2020 tax returns before March 2021 and received unemployment benefits in the year 2020. The IRS is sending out letters to Americans that are still owed refunds. If you haven't received a letter but believe you're eligible for a refund, you can follow up with a tax professional or even the IRS. Now moving on to the topic of summer PEBT, we have two states that are pending information and that is the state of Georgia and New York. So now while the majority of the states has already sent out the $375 summer PEBT payments, there are still two states left that will send out these payments in the year 2022. Beginning with the state of Georgia, this state has announced that it will send the $375 payments starting in the month of January. And now moving on to New York, this state has been approved to provide the additional PBT benefits for summer 2021. However, payment dates are still not being announced by this state. Now remember guys that to be eligible to receive summer PEBT benefits, school children must be eligible to receive free or reduced price school meals at a school participating in the federal meals programs at the end of the school year 2020 through 2021. Next, we have the topic of PBT 3.0, meaning the school year 2021 through 2022. And as of right now, we have seven states that have been approved. And those states are Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota, New Mexico, North Carolina, and the state of Wisconsin. Now, I want to remind you guys that although your state has been approved, it doesn't necessarily mean that your child will be receiving PEBT 3.0 these children have to qualify, they have to meet a certain criteria in order to meet, uh, in order to receive these benefits. So here I bring you some additional information. I found a flowchart that actually contains pretty good, a pretty good um, details as to how a child should qualify for this PBT 3.0. So let's begin with this breakdown. So is your student approved for free or reduced price meals through the National School Lunch Program for this school year? Whether it's yes, you continue, right? Or if it's no, your student will not be eligible for student PEBT because they are not approved for the free or reduced priced meals. Now, was your student quarantined or in temporary virtual instruction? If the answer is no, your student is not eligible for student PEBT because they were present in school full time based on their attendance record. Now, if your student was quarantined or in temporary virtual instruction, right, and it was approved by the school, then your student is eligible for student PEBT and will get the benefits for the days when they were not physically in school based on COVID-19 related absences in their attendance record. So next, let's talk about those states that have a surplus in their budget. Remember guys, this could mean that some of this surplus money could go back to the people, it could go back um, into education, healthcare, our roads, right? So the state has to decide how to distribute this money. And so we're, there's a couple of states that we're gonna be keeping our eye on to see what it is they're gonna do with this additional money that they have in their budget. Minnesota's Department of Management and Budget said Tuesday that the state had $7.7 billion in extra money. On this list, we also have Missouri. Missouri's budget surplus will top $4 billion. Utah and Rhode Island expect to have an additional $600 million each. And then Idaho. Idaho officials say they have $1.4 billion in extra money. Iowa, for those in this state, closed the books on its fiscal last year with a $1.2 billion in surplus. In California, budget officials expect to have a whooping $31 billion, so much extra money that the state could be forced by existing law to give billions directly back to taxpayers. 
That surplus allows us to do things unprecedented in California's history, and that is invest in you," said California Governor Gavin Newsom at the California Economic Summit in the month of November. Now, for my friends in the state of Kansas, your governor Laura Kelly has announced a proposal to provide two hundred and fifty dollars to tax rebate. For Kansas resident taxpayers, so on December 22nd, Governor Laura Kelly announced a new proposal for a one-time $250 tax rebate to all Kansas residents who filed a tax return in the 2021 calendar year. Governor Kelly is calling for a one-time rebate in the form of a non-taxable direct payment of $250 for every Kansas resident tax filer. Resident tax filers who filed as married and filing jointly will be eligible for a $500 direct payment. All other filing types will be eligible for a $250 direct payment. And there you have it, you guys. These are some of the states that have a surplus in their budget. We're going to continue to keep an eye on other states. Hopefully, there's more states that are finding themselves in this situation. And we're also going to continue uh, to monitor what exactly is each state going to do with this surplus, right? Are they going to give it back to the people or are they going to put it back in things like education and healthcare, other things that could benefit our people as well? So I'll keep you updated in my upcoming videos. Now, for those of you that may wonder if the child tax credit will be extended into the year 2022, well, to be honest with you guys, the answer, it's all really up in the air as the Build Back Better Act has not quite yet been approved. So here I bring you the additional details. In the month of November, the House Pass Bill includes a one-year extension of the enhanced child tax credit, child care subsidies, four weeks of paid leave, an expansion of Medicare to cover hearing aids, and more than $50 billion in green energy programs, among a slew of other measures. So if it is passed in the Senate, the Build Back Better Act would keep the increased amounts through the year 2022. Obviously, here we're talking about the child tax credit and would keep the credit fully refundable. Joint filers making up to $150,000 annually and unmarried tax filers earning up to $75,000 qualify for the enhanced payments and could receive the money in monthly installments $250 to $300 anywhere between those amounts for the entirety of 2022. Only if, of course, if the Build Back Better Act is approved in the Senate. And now switching the topic just a little bit, the Build Back Better Act is also proposing a few changes to those on Medicare. The provisions related to Medicare in the Build Back Better bill include one that would allow the federal government to negotiate the price of certain drugs with pharmaceutical companies, which is intended to bring down the cost of some prescription drugs. Price negotiations with drug makers would start in 2025 with up to 10 drugs that year. That number would reach 20 by the year 2028. Additionally, the bill would cap beneficiaries out of pocket spending for Medicare's drug benefit, we're talking here about Part D, at $2,000 annually beginning in 2024 with yearly adjustments, and the cost for insulin would be limited to $35 per month. Hearing services also covered under Part B, which is outpatient care coverage, starting in the year 2023. This would include hearing rehabilitation and treatment services, as well as hearing aids. And that is all the updates that I have for today. Remember to turn on your notification button to know when I have uploaded a new video. See you next time!